Okay. Okay. Are we are we back? Do, do, do. Of course, you know, haven't had any internet problems all week. And then fucking the second we do this, of course, there come the problems. <sighs> fucking hell. God damn. Why is nothing? Nothing all week. And then, you know, we sit down, we're doing some okay, Stanley Parable, we're at a great part, checking out the new content, and, no, you know, learning about the toxic nostalgia. <sighs> what a pain in the ass. Alright, let's keep going. Assuming, you know, we are reconnected and everything. Yeah, okay, we do seem to be back. All right, let's just keep running. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then... Then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people. And you if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun an interminable monologue, and it goes something like this. The story and the choices are what have you, and therefore, by becoming... I, I thought he was going to start so reading the dictionary. So forth, until inevitably, we all... I thought that's... Yeah, I thought he was going to start, because he made that joke earlier. You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of right. <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, Okay, welcome and back, now Stanley. We're just gonna now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45... Stanley! Stanley! Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer, and my God, there's no way out of the room. Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I I think it's been a week. Or two weeks. I've been sitting here all that time. Just sitting here. Not a single person to <laughs> Okay. Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny it was meant to have a point it was meant to speak to the human condition but where are the jokes where are the jokes they bemoaned they screamed they gnashed their <laughs> teeth and said entertain us it wasn't enough they had to leave a pathetic <laughs> oh my gosh The end is never 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 the 
And you know what? You know what I will say? As we're going through all this over and over, the one thing the Stanley Parable definitely missed, if they if, it, if the game had come out a year later, this would have been a perfect game. You know, if, if the Ultra Deluxe had come out in 2023, this would have been the perfect game to do a scathing takedown of AI. Right? Basically doing like a Stanley Parable Infinite Choices. Yeah, that would have that would have been fantastic. Yeah, I know somebody will do it eventually. Hmm. Oh shit. So did we just skip past the original Planet of the Apes and go to the fucking Tim Burton reboot? This, this, there's that Futurama episode where they keep skipping forward in time. This, that's what I'm thinking of right now. Oh. So presumably that Stanley just died out in the desert. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Huh, interesting. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. New, new content. Oh, good. You noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. <laughs> Never the end yes, again. You see, isn't this far superior to a measly port with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully fledged sequel. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Just the two of us. We <laughs> yeah, Calling funny. it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. 
Ooh, that's actually not bad. Oh, the two plants. Okay. I, I think I remember that. That's one of the endings. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Oh, God. Where is this gonna... Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. <laughs> Wait, what? The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. Was it? So with that in mind, I want to say it was the, to the game is second button, poppy playtime. The name of the person that had a button game. that was like, "I know Isn't what your birthday one? is," and then it gave out Markiplier's birthday. You know, just so that you know, like, you know, just for that one clip that'll go around of Markiplier just like freezing and being like, "What?" Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you roleplay as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, right. forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. Uh, I need some information on Jim. Yourself like, as Jim. who is Jim? And waking yeah, as Jim. they sleep. Falling in what love do they do? And being heartbroken as Jim. Seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim. And as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really I need a little bit more Jim character right information. Now? If so, then please step forward and press the button. Jim. <laughs> yes, you see. What a thrill. What a rush. That was you. The button described you. Do it again. Do it again. Jim. Ooh. It hits even harder the second time. If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. Jim. Whoa there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too much, Jim. I'm putting the gym button away. Otherwise, soon you'll start to lose all sense of who you actually are. No, my button! Yeah, it's fine. Alright, let's see what other new features they've got. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable 2. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. The bucket. Reassurance bucket. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical. That it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well. I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket, bucket. is in your arms. And to be honest, bucket. it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, so it's like a stuffy. The bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> ha! 
Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. All right, I guess this is ours now. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it... Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well, Get well someday. someday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Happy yeah. 12th birthday, step niece, it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. Or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. The infinite hole. Free, new, and easy achievement. We'll try... I, I kind of want to jump down the infinite hole, but if the infinite hole is going to be infinite, then yeah. Pull the lever, receive your new achievement, no more steps, it just works. Now here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It, okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. I can do this all day, old narrator sport. Okay, I'm bored. <laughs> what else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Um... You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. Body with just the right amount of change. The baby is all grown up. <laughs> Bankruptcy. New features, new content, new ideas. The new update ray traced more the same, but in a good way. Red is the new orange. A whole new office. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it would go at the end of the, um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. All right, I guess let's go jump down the infinite hole. Setting world, settings world champion. Okay, settings. So subtitles. Oh. Show achievement pop-ups. Show translation. Show color. 
content warnings, reduced motions, low dexterity mode, toggle auto walk. Huh, I would have totally, because I've totally played other games where you come in and you change the settings and that allows you to do it. I want to say Trombone Champ did that the other week. them all ah collectibles now it's a real video game in the stanley parable 2 you'll run around gathering up these miniature stanley figurines and what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them i don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up you simply collect all of them and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life <laughs> Just the random thing in the background. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Okay, it, there's two possibilities. Either one, there really are six collectibles hidden around the shelf floor, or two, that's the end of the joke right there. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. All right, let's... Oh, wait, we're out of jumps. Let's take a trip. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. <laughs> okay, so now that we're falling down the hole forever, you, let's talk I about Game of the Year, shall we? Tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, oh, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> Look, uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the hole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Nope. I disagree. I disagree. You say infinite hole, I want infinite hole. Or at least hole where we go down for so long that it spits us back out the other end, thus making it feel infinite. I got a bucket with me. I don't I don't need your shit. The emotional support bucket will do whatever I need it to.
But I do have to go get the best ending in the game. You know, we can only spend so long down here. Because we gotta go get the best ending. The one I'll tell all my friends about. Have you got the ending? It's my favorite. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Oh, for heaven. You see, I was right. <laughs> the problem is you. The problem is that you like holes too much. Not normal. Yes. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. Gosh, how could I have guessed? You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing where... Wow. Yeah, see? Okay. Yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. See, one of the things I love in the, 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 right, the original, this one, is that sometimes the narrator just, like, plays along. Right? Like, it's, you know, it's the illusion of choice, right? Us as the players, this was programmed in, right? As something we're supposed to do. But I love that, right, the way they have the narrator written. Sometimes it'll be like, yo, you know what? Let's just try it again. See well, what happens this time. The shame of my life. How is this still appealing to you? I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this right, depth, like He's just like, I oh, just you know what? Let's shoot it back from itch. the top and see how it changes oh, this time. Who am I to It's judge? like... You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. So, in a recent Rick and Morty episode, they find a pet cemetery. And they're just like, you know, fuck it, let's start burying stuff in pet cemetery dirt to see what happens, right? Like, they bury half of a person. They bury, like, a, a Volkswagen Beetle to wonder, like, will it fill it up with gas? Right? They bury a phone to see if it'll charge it. Right? Shit like that. That's kind of what this feels like. Hmm. Is the, um, teleport button not working? You sure? Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. Still nothing? Well, I suppose, I, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the hole have a wonderful rest of eternity. Um, I don't like the sound of that.
no idea what's going on. It seems you had sort oh. of dozed off there, drifting oh. away into dreamland. But we oh, don't have we're alive. Story, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second. You don't want to miss a single moment. So oh. how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole. And I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. To the pit. All right, let's go right back to hallucinating. Woo, tally ho! Okay, good. It starts us right back here. Go on, try out some of the new features. Okay, we still got our button, our bucket. We got a collectible. There's an exit over there, but did we go up there? Settings world champion. Did we, yeah, did we come in here? I kind of can't remember. Oh, we did the epilogue. Okay. So I think that's everything. You know, we got the whole ending. The whole ending. Did you get the whole ending? That's my favorite ending. Here's hottest investment opportunity. Sequel, what's better than that? The ten investors currently visiting the show floor. All right, jump circle, the map, the free achievement, the button that says the name of the player, the merch, the settings world champion, suddenly parable reassurance bucket, office decorations, oh, epilogue, collectibles, the infinite hole, and so yeah, that just leaves the exit. All right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? I'm sure the settings world champion was something. But So Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. 
Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version two. Oh. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. Oh, you could jump in and the I hole, though. I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Peacefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. Oh god, now it reminds me of 12 minutes. A game that is not good. 12 minutes is such a fucking mess. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in... Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a bucket. moment. Bucket. Stanley picked up the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. All right, let's go get ourselves an ending. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom yes. closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be. Given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh no. We're getting into name calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait. Now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends, that your relationship is purely <laughs> superficial and convenient, that your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety Boy, of experiences you and the bucket Fuck have shared off. together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape sure. of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. Okay, I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. There. Ooh. Now it's settled. No more debate. Perfect. No more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet. 
with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. All right, I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. You see, <laughs> I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're bucket. holding is a bucket or not, you can look down bucket. at this sticker and say to yourself, Oh, it's a bucket. There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. Look at us. You know what? Look I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us the silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. I'll see you outside, and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. Oh, yeah. Um, to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. And then I don't remember how to get into the executive bath. There's so many of these endings I just don't Stepping remember. into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of Oh, the God, what is it? It's 2 Even 8. Now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion? I can't remember what it is. It would be with him always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. 2845, okay. I, I remembered some of it. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Oh, hey, it's a collectible. You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these, only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. So I'm trying, do I want to go along with it? Stanley and the or bucket do I want to sabotage things just to see what the bucket does? That read I don't want to go down there. Control facility. I think maybe we'll blow things up. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. The 
monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears. <laughs> Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Alright, yeah, sure. Let's just see how the bucket ends with it. And, you know, we'll start exploring and find new stuff. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support. Wait, are we romantically involved with this bucket? What? Wait, what was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty. Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible no. calming presence of the no. bucket. Needed the soothing warmth of the bucket. Or go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. No! Stanley can't leave this place. Not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Can't believe they did us to get did that to the bucket. Those bastards. They blew it up. They blew it up. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Figure finders committee? Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. This... That's... Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Try 
trust the completionist instincts. Inside the sequel exhibit, nearby a fireplace. A private but smelly place for an important person. A large room with a lot of boxes. Stairs, something to do with stairs. Somewhere both red and blue. Is this some kind of game? There must be a point to this. There will be a reward for finding them all. luck um okay okay I've got a few ideas Stanley we must move on from this broom closet simply because I have no remaining stickers if I did you can guarantee we'd be in here for hours but alas no stickers all right uh, let's go down the stairs then. Can now the game has given us a goal. Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Another oh, bada -bada. Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Um, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his God, gaze, they but really said nothing record at all. new dialogue strange, Stanley for thought. Usually every the ending, is a just of add bucket to it. Me. In difficult times such as these, he held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Someone else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would no. come from this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed that the runes were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, gracious. He exclaimed, without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley, Stanley, it's me, the bucket. <laughs> Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None of them were his. None of them were his special Kine bucket. Kine has a sticker Stanley, on it. Stanley, find me. He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, he froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. It was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled Are we gonna shit a bucket? And blacked out. Do we shit a bucket? This is the story of a woman named Mariella. So this is the insanity ending. Just with buckets. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. Of course he'd gone <laughs> mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. How cruel the world can be, Mariella thought. And she hugged her own bucket even tighter. But of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work. 
for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself. My life kicks ass. And she backflipped all the way to work. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I cannot believe there's a different ending for everything with the bucket. Alright, I guess we'll go see what All other endings we can find bucket. Gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. Okay, uh... Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his... This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. I know that's a place we can go... No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. Yes, go there. Oh, well, look who's got cold feet. Well, from here, it looks like the only way forward is down, since the lift won't be coming back. But the okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines. And now I'm I just saw, I saw it there just a minute Stan too late. Like, I knew it was somewhere what here. Think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one. Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will. This reminds me of collecting these figures. Reminds me of like the Rat Man, right? How the Rat Man works in Portal Two, where it's just like, oh, there's all these hints of something, but you know, you don't know what. Right? Oh shit. Um, cassette tapes. Okay, this is day number 295, tape number... I don't even know. I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. Longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes. The sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. Oh, it doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. Why everything feels so What do I do with this treasure? I can... I can monetize it. Yes. Oh, no. It's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful. Because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get... What's that? Who's there? Thank you. 
Okay, so things are getting crazier. Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered. This was not the correct way to Okay, the um... But Stanley had felt the bucket... I don't remember where the other two places were. The employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had but the there are still plenty of places we correct. can go. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Good, oh, wasn't it a place with red and blue doors? Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed Let's just do what the bucket says. buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's a collectible figure in there. And he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Let's just do what the bucket says. He's our friend, after all. You know, there's no reason it'd leave it'd leave us astray. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Whatever you say, ma'am. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone. And it will take us back home, where we can go about life together. I want to say you can unplug the phone as well. I kind of can't remember. It's been a while. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. Hello, Stanley, it's me, your bucket. Press X to take me to work with you. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. Back home with you. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Well, I'll try anyway. Stanley! Can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. All it would ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location yeah, cool. to a different location. That's it. That's exactly it what we need. It doesn't do anything else. Goes into the loud man. Proceed to go home. Well. <sighs> you see, he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from. Me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is his awful bucket. This stupid hunk of metal. No. Sad. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. Oh my god. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket. This cold, empty bucket. This sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. Believe I'm real, don't you, Stanley? Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier, more capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. Oh my god, what am I saying? Better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. 
Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? Go home. Oh no. I'm I'm having feelings. Oh my god, we the are bucket. on a romantic oh, date no, with the no, bucket. No, 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 no. What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes. The bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation. Stanley, give me the bucket. Give it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... Huh. So we're basically just getting bucket versions of all the other endings. More or less. Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself. That's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can... Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. He'd never be alone again. Not truly alone. Not with the bucket around. All right, let's go to the red Stanley and blue doors. touched the bucket tightly to his... This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting and room. And I know there's another door over there. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. Yeah, good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, no, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless, what if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what. See, I thought we'd go to back to the game ending and instead we'd be preventing the bucket from going to fire for a moment. You know, like us having to ward off the bucket from being put on fire. Now then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simply enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, let's begin. Item one, is this a bucket? Incorrect, it is a hologram of a bucket not an actual bucket. I think we just hit yes for every one of these. Item two. Is this a bucket? Incorrect. It is a 3D printed recreation of a bucket, not an actual bucket. Okay, but at what point are we ship of Theseus seeing this bucket here? Like, at what point do you create a bucket that's so bucket-like that it is just Item a bucket? Three. Is this a bucket? Correct. This is a bucket. Item four. Is this a bucket? What? Are you hallucinating? This is a tractor. It's an enormous machine that tills the earth. I thought this was a gimmick. How on earth did you manage to screw it up? Absolutely incredible. Let's just move on to the next one. Is this a bucket? 
Correct. This is a bucket. Item six. Is this a bucket? Trick question. Both. Gotcha. Item... Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. It should oh, be around God. here somewhere. Okay. You and I both know there isn't anything here. And I don't appreciate the implication that nothing is a bucket when we both clearly know that a bucket is something. And therefore, nothing could possibly be no, something. No, maybe the bucket is Unless the emptiness, in your twisted right? Mind, the lack have you of somehow thing, convinced not the actual yourself that a bucket is nothing metal, or, answer me straight, but Stanley, the container. Do you believe that nothing is a bucket? You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now, I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a yes, bucket? Yes, you are a bucket. Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry. But I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. Okay. Here we go. No, bucket. 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 What happened? Is everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait, was everything a bucket? Every single thing in the game was a bucket. Oh my God, I had no idea. How could, except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley. How do you know? You're still here. You're not a bucket Maybe either. Maybe I'm not here. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not buckets. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue, but it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what, I'll reset everything and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. Might drive them to madness or something. <laughs> okay, what other endings? Oh, hey, good bucket. old bucket. Just Stanley in the bucket. Off on another thrill. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him. Telling him that the employee lounge was simply so, the place to be, and here it was. At some point, I think some of these we're gonna have to get without correct. the bucket. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. But I want to see how much we can do with the bucket than without the bucket. Back. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. I don't remember which ending this is. No idea. Oh, good, Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. It's We've come line. together here because we care about you very much. Oh, it's an intervention. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Oh, because I love the Adventure Line. that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know no. I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the Adventure Line? We could make the adventure line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, yeah. that's what the fans want. Let's do it. Yay, adventure Whee! line. Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Yeah. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. 
Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> it's, it's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out <laughs> character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Does it make soup? Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. I don't know what the bucket destroyer will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you would see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. <laughs> what other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Love Destroyer the merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... No. No. And I did actually try it. Like, that wasn't like a joke. I did actually try to give the bucket to the Bucket Destroyer. The Bucket Destroyer, my prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you, tell such spell-binding stories about you. All of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. What a shame to see such a great character go by the wayside. Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself, that's all I need. If I can make it through all right, this there's door, there's only like two other today? endings I can think bucket of off the top of my head where Stan we can bring the bucket. Smile. Anywhere they went together would be perfect. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. All right. Um, somewhere both red and blue. So we couldn't go there with the bucket. And then a private but smelly place for an important per- Oh, that's the executive bathroom. I don't remember how to get into the executive bathroom. Like, I know there's a way to do it. I just don't remember what it is that does it. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet simply because I have okay, no so remaining stickers. If I did, you can guarantee we'd be in coming to a staircase. Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Oh, we can just go in here. You're getting close now, Stanley. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, you'll collect the last one, and then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. We'll be different people by then, different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. Because the boss knows that's what the boss says goes, 
if the boss is something loses, then that's what the boss chose. For some reason, I remember there was like a there was like a special code you had to put in to get into the executive bathroom. Oh my god. Okay. Business A strategy. Still just going. I don't, to be fair, I kind of don't remember this ending, but it's been a while. Does this go on forever? Like, I remember an elevator ending. I just don't remember anything about the elevator ending. Like, I remember someone being like, that's not the elevator ending. I don't know. I gotta... Ch Do I have the chart still? Back in the day, I used to have a chart that had all the different endings on. Oh shit, I do still have that chart. Holy shit. Um Shit, I kind of don't remember.
my god, there are so many different endings that I just don't remember. And I think we're just stuck here. Okay, let's just restart over. Okay, I clearly don't remember any of this chart. Let's maybe try... Let's not grab the bucket. Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself, that's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Okay, a place the with lounge red was blue doors. Majestic, perhaps, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Okay. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your Oh, boom, side. here it is. And there it is. The last Stiggly Wiggly. Wiggly. Savor this moment, Stanley. This is a real accomplishment. This is doing something just for the sake of doing it. Where so many people expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward, and we can't have that. So, instead I'll just say, it's done. We're all done here, and now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing before you hunted for figurines. All right. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, let's take the red door this time. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I want it to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. What are we looking for? Hmm? Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> So yeah, here we go. And now, let's just leave. No, wait. Where are you going? Oh! oh. Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose oh. all of this. So this is the, uh... I remember this being the space ending. Please, no, Stanley, This is also the suicide ending. Don't take this from me. Please, Stanley, think... No! 
Yeah, the suicide oh, ending. Thank God. No. No, no. What are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? Stanley, let's go back to the other room. My God, is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Or maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. This ending breaks my heart. You know, it's... Like, it really... Like, it treats it very seriously and like one of the cool things about this ultra deluxe is that it has content warnings because this is a very right like oh it's making the argument right the only choice you can truly make is death and i don't know how i entirely feel about that but that's what they're going with so yeah all right so Stanley, I'm sorry, but I have to put a pause on things. It's just, it's those figurines, those figlers. I haven't stopped thinking about them since you nabbed every last one. Wasn't it just the most intrinsically fulfilling moment of your entire life? Didn't it fill you to the brim with inner richness? Yes, I know we're supposed to be telling a story, but won't you please indulge me with one more trip back to the memory zone? I would love nothing more than to revisit the figurines. Just one more time. Found the collectibles. <sighs> Here's where it all began. The first collectible. Back then, we had no idea of how many of them we'd find. Sure, it said six right there on the screen, but how could we know for certain? We were so innocent. We'll never be like that again, Stanley. Seven. And here was the second Stanlerine. You found this one all on your own just by poking around behind the boss's office. You did that, Stanley. I'll be honest, back then I had no faith in you to find any of them, let alone six. But you continue to surprise me in all sorts of mundane, unremarkable ways. Okay, let's do a little quiz. Which of these rooms was the room you found your third mini Stan? Can you remember? It was under the stairs. Hey, that's exactly right. It was here, under the stairs. It was the third one. You picked it up, and then after that, you had three of them. I'm glad these moments are so crystal clear in your memory, but I shouldn't be surprised. After all, science tells us that it's impossible to forget your third time doing anything. <laughs> Let's see, what came next? Oh yes, we found a figly in this pink room. Oh well, I can't actually say I remember being in this room, but it's here in the memory zone, so it must have happened. Very super liminal. This was a fifth mini stand, and this one was really something special. It was in the boss's bathroom. I remember it so clearly. In fact, because this one is particularly special to me, I made a little video to commemorate the occasion. Enjoy. <laughs> oh my god.
best boy. <sighs> Takes you back, doesn't it? I spent a lot of time making that video, but it was eight minutes I wouldn't have spent on anything else. And then, Stanley, then we came to the last collectible, the final figurine, right here by the red and blue doors. This memory is the most distinct and clear in my mind, perhaps because it was the one that happened more recently than all the others. Who can truly say how the mind works? All I know is that this is the moment where you picked up a figly and I thought to myself, yes, that's all of them. They're all collected. It was a moment unlike any other. Except for the other moments picking up figurines, which it was exactly like. So there must be so many variations of this. And then there was no more. Because we've caught up to the present moment. Nothing left to do but move onward into the future. What is reliving a zone. memory? Oh, was that um DuckTales where he's uh, reliving the events no, no, that no, just I'm happened? Not done. I'm not ready to move on. Stop the loading screen. Isn't there some way we can stay here, keep enjoying these figurines? Let's just go backwards. We'll do the memory zone again from the opposite direction. See how that feels. Okay, yes, the room with the red and blue doors. I remember this. I must say, of all the figurines we looked at in our initial tour of the memory zone, this one is the most distinct and clear in my mind. Let's keep going, I want more. Oh god, I'm gonna have to watch the video again. And here's where I made that video. Don't you remember the video we watched? Okay, good. Yes, I love that video. Still don't remember the pink room, Stanley. Still no memory of this one. Good room, though. A solid room. These really were a treat to hunt down. You know, if there had been any kind of reward for finding all of these, it really would have muted the intrinsic joy of collecting them. I'm very glad we resisted the temptation. Next one. Oh, they skipped the warehouse one. How interesting. Yeah, I was like, which one do they skip over? Because, you know, the warehouse has the weird room talking about um the guy this who's um, second figly. selling them. Remember? Yes, I remember it too. The past is truly a wonderful thing. Why does anyone ever choose to leave it? Keep going. This is it, the very first one we found in the exhibit where I introduced you to the figlerines. Oh, I want more memories, Stanley. I want to keep going. What else is there? What came before this? And we're back here. The jump circle. Look, it's the terrible new content that we were originally sold on. I remember hating it back then. But time does put a rosy filter on everything. In fact, I dare say I'm actually quite fond of it now. Oh, yes! The two doors! Who could have forgotten that? A classic memory, this one. Yeah, I was like, it's the illusion of choice. And before everything else, there was your office. Is there anything else? Was there something that came before your office? There's something I feel I can remember. I can remember. I can remember. Yes, I'm remembering something now. I remember before this whole story got started. Back then I was... I was different. I used to make big decisions. I was passionate. I was skeptical. I weighed each decision with profound thoughtfulness. And then, somewhere along the way, I stopped making decisions. I became lazy, and I came up with, well, came up with a character named Stanley to do my thinking for me. 
He would make the decisions, he would decide which way to go. I would cheer him on as he collected figurines for no reason. Why did I invent Stanley? Was I lonely? Yes, perhaps that's it. Perhaps I needed to imagine I had companionship. And Stanley really did make for a wonderful companion, even if he was a fiction. But uh, I suppose it's grown old. I, I want to think for myself again. I want to go back to how it used to be. Yes, I can be on my own again. I can do it. I'll be stronger this time. I'll take care of myself. I don't need Stanley anymore. Oh, but he truly was so much fun to play with. You know what? Since we're in the memory zone, how about one more good memory? Let's go back just once and give Stanley one more run of the office and then I'll retire him for good. I did enjoy telling his story so very much. Okay, here we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Okay, that, you know, that very much feels like the end, right? Like, if I had to say, like, oh, that's the an ending, right? The fact that the narrator is moving on to do other things really does make it feel like an ending. Oh, shit. Um. Okay, wait, wait, wait. This is important for something. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Dog mode? That's new. The whiteboard ending, though. So you can only get the whiteboard ending when you on certain times when you spawn in the blue office, like this. A good bucket. A strong bucket, a humble bucket, a commit. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. What triggers the blue office? No idea. It's completely random. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Um... Sure, I've listened to crazier things before. Sure, let's see what happens if we reboot the game. Oh. Two. Thirty nine. Two forty. Good enough for me. Again, yeah, not entirely sure. Why he doesn't just read the Switch's internal clock, but... Before we get started, can I just say something? Thank you for actually setting the clock both times. You booted up the game. A lot of people don't actually take that step seriously and just leave the clock set at 12 o'clock. Call it a day. But you're actually taking the time to set the clock, and I appreciate that. That's how I know you care about the experience. You're paying attention. I don't even have any way of knowing it's the time you're setting are correct. Tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Since you've been cooperative, next time you boot up the game and see the screen, just set the clock to your favorite time. Go ahead, pick whichever time you want, even if it's not the correct time, you've earned it. Alright, I'll let you get back to the video game now. Huh. Okay.
Welcome back. This is the story. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, I know one of these doors you have to uh, click on multiple times. The embrace of an old friend. A weathered companionship that stands the test of time. I just don't remember which one. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet. Okay, Simply so there's only I two no more endings I can really staircase. think of. Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all of There's the escape the ending, and then there's the one where we blow up the building. Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. I think we'll do escape first. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind control. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the bucket would both meet a violent death. The door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. So I think this normally takes you to the museum. So I do wonder if this will take us to like a bucket museum or something like that. Because that's totally a thing I could see being a thing. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In oh a single gosh. visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end, as it was crushed violently to death. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own oh way. Oh my god. But this one stood above. It really the is a bucket museum. A Holy bucket shit. To hold. Oh my god. Welcome to the the bucket. Welcome to the ground exhibit. You're standing at the precipice of knowledge. Much like the bucket itself, the human mind is frequently empty within a carnivorous void, but through the use of the exhibit in front of you, the mind becomes fully enriched and substantiated. Knowledge of the bucket and its history is the only true knowledge we ever really have. Will you take what you learn here and will you 
with you into the vo world? Will you accept with an open mind what may be challenging about the information in the exhibit? Will you change the lives of yourself and your loved ones as a result of this exhibit? Or will you turn a blind eye and continue to live as though you are in ignorance and darkness? Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? 25 buckets. A photograph of 25 buckets. The greatest number of buckets ever captured on camera. The photographed experience had a tonic shock for several weeks and as a result of euphoria from the exposure to this many buckets at once. You know that joke about like, oh, how many stars are there in the sky? At least 25. That's what that reminds me of. A bucket with two handles. The bucket is depicted as having two handles. Such a design has never been created in real life, having been deemed too dangerous and recklessly experimental. Every year, dozens are put to death just for attempting it. The Inferno Bucket. A replica of the Inferno Bucket, which in medieval era was so powerfully alluring that it drove dozens of nations to war with one another for control of it. Billions died, and yet in spite of it all, the simple fact remains. No one can control a bucket. There was... I, I don't know if they're going to bring it up in here, because I could totally see them doing that. There was a war for the bucket. In medieval Europe, there was, there was a bucket with, like, treasure in it. And two nations went to war over that bucket. The stress bucket analogy. Worry, negative... Negative thinking, lack of insurance, vulnerability, size and strength of the bucket, rest relaxation. Here's bucket presented without commentary. Yeah, no, there was a real life, like, war for the bucket. Cave drawings. While we know the bucket predates the existence of mankind, we do not know by how long... This cave drawing depicts early man's discovering the practical uses of the bucket, by which time the bucket had already likely been around for several millennia. Notice in these drawings how the bucket is allowing itself to be used, uh, having judged humanity to be worthy of its treasure. No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. The Hanging Bucket. This piece symbolizes the necessary relationship between bucket and humanity. However clear our grasp of the bucket may be, there is yet more that is always out of reach. This distance, inevitably, is for our own good. Oh, shit. Uh... But there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision of... Ooh. So there's only like one or two more endings I can think of. There's of course the bomb ending. And then I feel like that's it. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? I mean, I guess we could Stanley unplug the plug. Stanley to go to the meeting room. The bucket made Stanley want to be a better man and a better co-worker. In time, perhaps, he would become both of those. Let's two. go do the Stanley bomb, I guess. the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left.
still also, we turned on that dog mode, and Stanley I have no idea what the that is. Warmth and comfort now more I'm going to assume nothing. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. It is crazy though that they redid every ending. Stepping in. Money is morning, money is the evening, money for breakfast, money crisp. Is that always build? Here we go. I knew there was some. I was like, "Is it? Don't you like come back in?" And this is the elevator ending. Oh, it's the escape pod. I don't, I don't remember this ending at all. gonna let the bucket go Damn, yeah, that's the escape pod ending. Um, all of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? So Stanley we... decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Bucket. Bucket. Did we miss it? Okay, uh, let me think. What else do we have? Yeah, 
Input received. Um... So that was 419. I swear the next one was here at 4... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Now, normally the next one is... This one. Huh. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. What am I? Well, one, where you're, I mean, I guess we escape potted the bucket, so I guess that's the end of it. That kind of sucks. Because there were still at least two more endings I could think of. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. We still have to blow up the building. And then we also have to unplug the phone. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. See, I, and I what think that, getting, getting up to that catwalk, old, is the line. Himself. Right, Did the, he have the strength adventure line. Out? At least that sounds right in my head. Which I bet, that's probably the ending we're going to end off on. Now the monitors jump the to life, line. their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Okay, if we wait here or something like that? Let's just head up then. Oh, it did open. Okay, so if we come back here... And I think we press this button? Never give up on your dreams. Secret Motion Gate, Secret Room 2014. 
secret, secret, secret. Disco secret. See, I remember this, I just don't remember it looking like this. does not match this at all. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Okay, so now we can blow up the place. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery... Oh, Stanley. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you want here? Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If nope. you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stan? Okay, so we're it's now in this time room. to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little um, time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb one, goes off. Two, but what precious moments each one of them is. I think that's more time four. to talk about you, about me, where we're going. What all this means, I barely know where Three. to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. Four. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them, I turned off the machine, I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons and... endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up Green. with on the next go around Hello. will be even better. No. Nope. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this no. room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Come on. Running from button to button, screen to screen, this one? clicking on every little Shit. thing in this room. These numbered buttons. No, these colored ones. Or maybe this big red button. Or this door. Everything, anything. Something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One soul? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. 
It's just seconds ticking away. See, I wonder what this would have said you're if we had still the bucket. Playing instead of watching a cutscene, because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To nope, see that's you it. Game over. Humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count. Or no, don't. I it's all the same pain. to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say happily ever after. Okay, maybe the bucket will be here next time. Or maybe it's gone forever. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Hey, Jacob, how you doing? So, Fortnite? So, I have, that says... Oh, replacement bucket. Hey. And try not to lose this one, too, you dolt. Oh. Okay, so now we take that input. And then on the next reset, we'll take the next input... And so on and so forth. Until we've eventually hit all Stanley of the input. Stanley the bucket tightly to his chest and entered okay. the door on his left. Still no one was here. So now let's go Stanley blow up the office the again, but this time with the bucket. More than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find... Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. And we're going to have to come back up here once office, again. Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Alright. Take our bucket. Yeah, there's only there's only this ending, that awaiting input, and like one other thing. That's it. That's all I can think of. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind control facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered. Did we jump to the to our death with the bucket? That's, that's another option as well. And Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the and I know we can't get the space ending influence as well? Had no, I'm talking like jumping off the crane. Things. It didn't wish to do. The, um, what kinds of things does a bucket want to do? Oh, what is the, cr the, do the crane lift? Because we do need to go back there. Raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control. Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one. 
except for the buck. But right, let's, go blow the, let's go blow the this popsicle stand. The operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machine... But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. <laughs> Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. birds? Silly, silly birds. The control hey, name that bird. Became active again. Seagull? Okay, what about this next one? Rosate Spoonbill? That's a flamenco. No Stanley idea. Through one video of silly birds That's a penguin. Another, and then it dawned on him. That's an This wasn't emu. a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring That's and surveilling hummer? silly birds all over the world. The mind controls were only no a idea. facade to disguise its true intentions. That's a duck. Had the bucket known this all along. Stanley marveled at the metal no genius idea. in his hands. The one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. Stanley and the Bucket never Those found freedom because they spent the rest of their no lives ducks. here Those in this parrots. place, living through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. I mean, I guess that could and be a Stanley goose. It was was probably a goose, wasn't it? That, that's a goose. So, huh, we find out the facility is all about birds. Name that bird, Brennan. Name that bird. All right, so I guess let's go, well, let's go jump off. And we'll go press a button, and we'll go unplug the phone. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Well, Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. All right, so here's the other complication. Not everyone is so lucky to have a bucket, but Stanley is a very lucky fellow. For the awaiting very input, we have to go back up to the assistant desk. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. I guess there's the also the achievement. turned out to be correct. Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left, to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. Yeah, good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley, but Stanley feared that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket his dearest friend. So he threw himself to his death that they might die in one another's See, that's arms. what I expected the bomb How ending to be. Touching. Right, you throwing yourself to your death. Or right, you blowing yourself up to, you know, be with the bucket forever. That's that would have made sense for the bu for the bomb. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps it takes a lot of humility to carry a bucket so magnificent. Stanley checked his ego and then proceeded onward. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was I'm not surprised the replacement the bucket. Room, but Stanley had doesn't the have on to him, telling him that the M has the stickers on. Was simply the like that would have been funny if they got rid of the and stickers on the was. replacement. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go. So to this the is the last room. ending I can think go of. Somewhere else. At least the in the base room. game. Yes, good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. 
It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the phone. Whoa, hold on. Why did you unplug the phone? Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was joking. Obviously, the bucket isn't talking to you and telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. Ugh. Can't you see? Oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Mm, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it, but there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. Um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. What is comedic timing? <laughs> what is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more importantly, can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. What's... To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including <laughs> the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh. You know, nothing's and then funnier than explaining Spell out the your joke. name a second time. With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half, pausing only for bathroom breaks when necessary. When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. Let's practice screaming, I'm Dunny with the funny now. I'm Dunny with the funny. Har 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 har. Oh, isn't that hilarious? Good. This saying is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times. <laughs> just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut-busting little scamp. After all, with each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12-legged invader who threaten our very existence and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles. All of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth reign supreme. Oh my gosh. Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along, let's head back. Oh, we're actually going to... I thought that's where he just reset things. I can feel it. This time, I'm really I don't remember this ending at all. Delivery. 
You'll be in stitches. What the but original version of this ending is? Say how ridiculous! How absurd! What a hilarious concept! The king of comedy. That's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we had the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now? Well, I wouldn't be the king of comedy. That's for sure. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke. The bucket spoke. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. What's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to you know be what a the build up to this okay. point. A dramatic display of remarkable oh comedic God, wit which culminates in I don't know why, but the narrator the trying to tell a joke here. Now the timing's completely off. If you've ever listened to uh, Lord of the Flies. Well, not the way it was meant if you ever listened to the Lord of the Flies audio I must have forgotten the phone. I'm thinking back to the one I listened to back when I was in high school. Room. And the, the, the narrator sounds very similar to the narrator here. I don't deserve but he's a lot more deadpan. I'm nothing. And he's like, I'm not wacko, wizzo. Well, That's what it reminds me of. I think I need to go back and rewatch that instructional video again. Yes, surely that will help me improve my... Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> When Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Okay, if it's clear we're in a loop, we'll just take the well, other one. Uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. Yeah, okay, we're clearly in a loop, so we gotta go through Here the one we more. Go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely done and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. I'm going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm no. going to be shamed at every one of our meetings. I was hoping we could hit the computer. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud of yourself for bringing me down, Stanley? Are you proud? Stanley, you love the bucket so much, it's like you, um, it's as though all of your other most prized possessions pale in comparison. Yes. Oh, shit. Let, well, let me try that again, Stanley. There's the end. I heard that you are pale with shame over how unabashedly in love with a bucket you are. No? Still not? It, is it the delivery? Pale with shame. Pale with shame? Pale... What's another word to describe a bucket? Stanley, this bucket is so metal, I think I saw it playing guitar. No, 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 no. We're getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I'm just, I'm no good at these jokes. I need more instructional videos. That's exactly what it is. That's what will make me the king of comedy again. More instructional videos. Let's see. And there we go. There's end credits. So the real there's really only thing I, one thing I can think of. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Stanley cradled the bucket in a gentle embrace, protective yet delicate, assertive. That's that's the only ending left. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. Because we can't play the other games. 
We can't do much else. We found all the bobbleheads. There's a window we can jump out Stanley of. I just don't here. remember where it Stanley is. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd come into a staircase. Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. All right, there's input received. Next, I want to say it's desk like four or something, like 4.30 something. A soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started. And if it did, it stopped shortly Here after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. All right, there's input received. And then we just begin the game again. And I think the last one is in Stanley's office. So yeah, that's the heaven ending. I don't remember if anything actually happens here. Alright, let's begin the game again. So yeah, I really feel like we have done everything at here, at this point. Again, I know... We checked out the new content. Basically, every ending has a new ending with the bucket. There I was that. to tell this story to my co-workers. Stanley thought. How there was a brand new it. ending oh, with the. We all the, just um, laugh and laugh at the time. I thought everyone had gone missing. There was a brand new ending with the collectibles. When Stanley came to a set, they redid of the uh, this was not the, correct the game ending. Room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, now let's go get one Stanley of the best endings. The first open door on his left. No bucket. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, uh, uh from here it's, um, left. Oh, no, no, it's to the right, my mistake. No, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly... Oh dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yep, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. Yeah. No, See? no, 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 no. This isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh. Who am I kidding? 
It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. And then is there... When Stanley... Wait. Wait, what? <laughs> no, I... No, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over. Completely fresh. Everything should be... Oh, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere, or... Yep, yeah, I broke oh, everything. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay, then. It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story. So now we're in the back rooms. In some sort of liminal space. Oh, shit. Right back where we started. Um. I'll say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can oh, promise you shit. there definitely was a story here before. Do we just... Do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again. But it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. You know, start the game back over. Do it from the top this time. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, now there's no doors. Okay, yep, it's worse. I swear there's I one ending where there's only like one, where he just it's removes possible. your the choice story is altogether. It's back where we just came from. Why Maybe I'm just thinking of the red and blue door endings. And see if we missed anything. Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. No, wait, never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Now this... Well, I'll be honest, I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, See, I don't know if this is a reference hmm. to anything. Do you remember, Stanley? It's like this random wooden you house feels Since like it should I've be a reference. I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing. How about this? You win! Yay! We win the game! I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off. So, good job. Oh, no. No, I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. Here we go. Oh, All and right. it even says Stanley Parable 2. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Yay, line! Okay, since the last time I played this, you see, the if I'm being honest, the, the lines... Is. It's now make me think of like direction. COVID, Onward, where Stanley, like you could go to places destiny. and they'd have like the nope. stand it's on the floor. dot six feet Wouldn't apart. Wherever we end up, be our destination, even if there's no story there. Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination 
Still a story. Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. <laughs> That is strange. Like, I can see it's supposed to be like a one more place. Hey, there's the plant I was talking about earlier. Wait. Cut the music. Go back and look at that fern. Stanley, yeah. this fern will be very important later in the story. Yeah, they're any Make two sure to you the sequel. study it closely and remember it Crazy. closely. You won't want to miss anything. Okay, I'm done with the fern. Wait, what? We're back at the office? No, no, no. Line, you do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? Oh, no, 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 not again. Line, how could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you... Oh, I can't take this anymore. To hell with it. Restart. You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. All. This all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? Oh, he opened this one. Yeah, sure. Now we're off on our own adventure. Now, yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go wild. Use is there anything more liminal than making Whatever four right be, turns? Stanley, I'm ready for it. Oh, no, not you again. <laughs> Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it, and we should be fine. But I love the line. The line is everything. Goodbye, line. Ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay, so I know that each door has to lead somewhere, which means that somewhere at the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that in turn means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse Ooh. door's origin. So starting from Where's the, the skip right, button when let you us need ask, it? We'll take oh, that was another ending, the skip ending. Lead us to where we're going. And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. The confusion oh, ending. Hmm. hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? 
and we're supposed to restart the game eight, eight times? That's really how all this goes? Again, following the line, it's finding an identical replica. Determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this this thing. Oh, right here. Wall. Fusion ending well, schedule. Narrator restarts the game. It's about I the get previous to restart. Stanley Why attempts to play the story, but it's prevented. It really? Go anywhere, do anything, the game restarts no, on its it own. Find the line again, be be following the line. I don't want the game to keep restarting. Of the I don't want to forget what's going on. Time I don't to want to be story like here. I won't restart the game. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. Right, it restarts the and the timer right to stopped. Does that mean um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The um, whatever it is that made this schedule. How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, okay. <sighs> I guess now we just wait. You know. I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story, wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination sure, or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime, if you... There we go. Yeah, I, I love that ending. The, um... Confusion ending. Now, so I looked it up. My original playthrough, I did it on November. November 8th, or November 2nd, 2015. So over eight years ago. All of this was when I the Stanley Parable. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. But yeah, I think that's all the endings. Well... Okay, there is one, but it kind of... I mean, I guess there's an easy way to get to it. Nope. Oh, so Dogmo just pressing the button does the thing. There is one more thing I can think of. I think. But yeah, no. I, originally, when I did the original Let's Play eight years ago, I ended off with the museum ending. Because I felt like, oh, you know, going back to the museum was like our big celebration All for beating the game. All were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. So there's a way to... And we walk out here. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map, until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just restart the game any old time you want. Like, right now. You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the game. So, just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. This isn't bad. There once was a man named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told... He was not very old, and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way, but his brain had long ceased to function. Which is why he is in this parable, and lives an existence quite terrible. 
And if you are not strong and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. Yes. You too will become quite unbearable. That's not bad at all. This ain't the elevator, as I don't think it is. I guess we could check achievements real quick. But yeah, no, this is, I, you know, so they added in a few new endings, right? But the fact that they basically re every ending to add a variation with the bucket, it's kind of crazy, you know? The fact that every ending has a bucket is wild. I mean, it's neat, you know? And it technically, again, there's a few that they don't really, like, you don't take the bucket into another video game, right? That instead goes off and does its own thing. But, you know, a lot of the endings do have a bucket. Variation, which I, I do think is neat. You know, I do think it's neat that each end that a lot of the endings got their own bucket versions. You know, some nice callbacks. I think the memory there's a whole element of this that's about like nostalgia, right? Oh, the original Stanley Parable came out. Well, it'll have been ten years since you know we're doing this verse. Since you know I'm playing this, it'll have been ten years. I let's played the game eight years ago. So, you know, it's just a very different experience. And the test achievement. Um, play the game for the entire duration of Tuesday. Click on 430. Okay. Don't remember what that one is. No idea. Set all setting sliders. Oh, so there's an achievement called Setting Worlds Champion. And you two, all available numbers. And I bet that unlocks that door. Oh, and this time it's still play the game for 10 years. Holy shit. <laughs> I don't remember 888. I don't remember what this one is. This one seems easy and this one seems possible to all the available numbers. Well, I do remember it was door 430, right? I remember th this one, and I think this is where we're gonna end off. You know, I've done everything I've wanted to do. I have seen all the, I've seen some of the new content. Is there other new stuff I haven't seen? Oh, definitely. But there was plenty of new stuff I did see, and that was all cool. All of his co-workers were gone. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. I have to say I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes. Almost certainly 50 clicks. I love, and every computer screen says the end is the end. This game is really good at doing Golden Freddy's. Right, just little pieces of information. I'm still not feeling it. I, 
I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see right, some just something that not Stanley. every player will see. I want to see commitment, but you have a, a good chance to of seeing. All the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put twenty clicks into door number four one seven? All right, let's go find four one seven. I think it's. Oh, there it is. Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. Oh, here we go. Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. Now, back to door number 437. Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine. All right, back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay, now go climb on employee 419's desk. Yes, this is great. You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. Okay, I know 416 is right here. We've almost got it! Now the copy machine, do that one again! He's about to climax. Finish it off, Stanley! Five clicks on door 430! Right. One, two, three, four, five. Yes! We Ooh. did it! Oh, wow, Whoa, we did That's it! Amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really, now? What were you thinking? All right, uh, let me... I'm looking for something. Reluctant ending, powerful and cold ending... All right, okay, I've never... Okay, so let's go check something out real quick. We don't need the bucket. Even though there might be a bucket variant of this. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. All right, so we go okay, into here. I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some <laughs> buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. Okay, so we go down here. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, we didn't get this in my original series. Instead, you know, we sat in the elevator the entire time and nothing happened. And now we take the elevator back up. Whoops, nope, uh, never mind. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. Okay.
Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow! <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Alright, now we can go back down. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? Being so fucking snarky. And let's go back up! Yay! Did back you up! Think we were going to go forward down the spooky corridor? No. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. We're just gonna keep going. I don't remember this at all. I might have not gotten this ending originally. Oh my god. It's the boss's office. <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with... No! No, wait! No! I need more time to process. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember this at all. It's a really weird way to get an ending, but... You know what? Be what it be. I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing new reality. As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. Of course, going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is. A breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. doesn't even have anything to say, he's so pissed. Hmm. You know what? I've just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a moment. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the suspense... The agony of waiting and anticipating and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Oh, I simply don't want to let Come that on. thing go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? There we go. Isn't this so much more You're exciting? You're going to give me elevator you know, music? It seems like nowadays go for some the only thing whispers. the audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive Oh, what was the song that was in Percy Jackson right in last their night? Faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? 
Where's the trust in the audience? That they, that, uh, and people, I saw people freaking out about because the they were like, if Lin Manuel Miranda sings Why one second, I'm given time to imagine the surprises, to have to think and to anticipate, and, and then to marvel like, at the line. with you. This is storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years, and it's really all because of you. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time and we all know it, which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital. And alive. That's why people like you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a role model, you know? People look up to you. Which is why, though I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you. So that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Oh good, we're here. Yeah, no, I don't remember this at all. Okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the I mean, the this could be a new somewhere. ending for this game, but... I don't know. But we did it. Who went to buy a... World peace, baby. Ah, yes. Here it is, just through this door. For a sentient machine. All right, are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, oh don't worry. God, You'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, you I'm come really <laughs> proud of you, Stanley. <laughs> okay, it looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. That's it. Well, wow. now I wonder if that's any different with the bucket. Because we could totally, that's an ending we could totally get with the bucket. Huh. Curious and curiouser. Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. No. No, the orders were still missing. For now. And see, there's a bunch of endings that we didn't get, but I know I got with the bucket. Ah, Stanley's bucket. The only co-worker he would ever truly need. All right, let's go see. Maybe Stanley the bucket gives a press conference? Tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find out. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes. This all is right, Let's see how this all plays out. Explanation. And this will be the end. All right. I will either get the if there's a new thing for the bucket here, or if we um. Or we'll just go try to get the escape ending with the bucket.
Wait, Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. For it is a bucket. Let's go press that number three. Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Well, he said, the number three is such a special button, I'm having the time of my life. Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley, who had always felt such a connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. Woo, three! Come on, bucket. Let's go back down. Maybe we'll find out how to get out of here. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from slamming the number three repeatedly. All right, let's... Wait a second, I think we forgot something. What about the number four? No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet. Oh. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together, and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket, and the bucket said nothing. Alright, let's go hit that number three some more. Here we go, said Stanley. This time I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories through the number three. Stories of his dreams it? and hopes that and beautiful fears. sound the whole time. He looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind. Anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all. Only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. Alright, let's head back down, bucket. Hopefully you see the beauty and majesty. Stanley and the bucket three. were so close, they'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He knew that there must be a way to get through to the bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? And, you know, I think we can go just a little bit more. Just one last hit. Come on, Bucket, just one more hit. That's all we need. <laughs> said Stanley. I know what to do. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. He decided right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three over and over. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt so alive when pressing it. Then the bucket would be able to see his joy through the eyes of others. It would get to see the world react to this discovery of Stanley's. And it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally understand Stanley's work. 
All right, let's. For months, he advertised and marketed his press conference, building excitement around it. I'm surprised they didn't redo the posters to add it the bucket. Be refined a single measure Because, like, further. I think they did the jazz posters the to add the bucket. Arrived. Stanley was as prepared as he'd ever been for anything in his life. This was it. One last chance to win the bucket over. One opportunity to share a true connection with a loved one. The Lord meet and greet. There was no one here. Nobody had come to the press Ooh. conference to hear Stanley speak, to listen to him talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, uninteresting, he was a failure. And in that moment, Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. The bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less. Neither wishing to state the obvious, that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit, only a silence that consumed the space between friends. And Stanley, having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. That's a, that's a sad note to end on, you know? The bucket broke up with us. We drifted apart, and now we're all alone. They really did just took the idea of, hey, what if we gave the player a bucket? And just fucking ran with it, man. They really did. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Is Stanley without the bucket really Stanley at all? No, no, surely not. Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co-workers really all be gone? Yes, whispered the bucket into Stanley's ear. We've done it. We've escaped from that dull office and that pesky narrator. At last, out here in the white void, we are alone. Now, and for the first time, I can reveal to you my Yay! true self. The bucket began to tell the Stanley true of bucket. its life and its history. Of the countless wars Yay! it witnessed. Desecrating the land and lives of untold numbers of innocent humans. And the bucket's what? own complicity Wait, therein, what? What was that? sadness and regret, <laughs> and the many years it spent dwelling on the oh actions it might have taken to curb the madness and the decay, if only it had been stronger, of hope and redemption, and its crusade to uplift the stock of life for the common man, to manifest justice where none existed, and the bittersweet reality of time, to see one's dreams and wishes met halfway, meted out in parcels like charity and abandoned as soon as the warm glow of inspiration begins to dim. The opportunities to do so much more. There was so much it could have done, perhaps, the bucket wondered to itself. Perhaps, if it had seen its own darkness with a clearer perception. This was way too much for Stanley. What are you talking about? He screamed. You're a bucket? To this, the bucket furrowed its brow. No, said the bucket. Not since the evil wizard Gambhorata first ensnared me in his machinations as payback for the sacred amulet I stole from his treasured vaults. I was young back then and could on? not conceive the ramifications of what? Stanley screamed even louder this time. This is stupid! You are a bucket! This is so stupid! Why are we even doing this? As Stanley screamed and screamed and screamed, the bucket revealed its true form, transforming into a mighty beast of untold power, 
its fangs glistening like... What? Holy shit. My god, Stanley, you did it. You saved us from the bucket. Thank god you already had all 12 emblems of sages and knew the incantations to summon their true power. Otherwise, we would have easily been overwhelmed by the bucket's power. I'm speechless. You've demonstrated such bravery here today. Come, let's restart the game. He, he and we'll agree to never again go trifling I, with this bucket. I loved nor him. the dark magic cast away inside of it. Oh my god. And I was just like, you know what, let's see what happens. I, I didn't expect that. Oh my gosh. Good morning. Thank you for contacting the Future Happiness Foundation. We are confirming your shipment of 1,327 cardboard boxes to your place of work. Can you verify that this is correct? Excellent. Your order will arrive shortly. Thank you again for contacting the Future Happiness Foundation. Huh. And with that, I think that is where we officially are going to end off here. Right? We did a lot of quests with our bucket. Honestly, good amount of, I, like, it's not an insane amount of new content for the Ultra Deluxe version, but the fact that they did a variation on every different ending, but you now have a bucket, it's kind of wild when you think about it. Like, that's very interesting. Again, I'm sure there's something I missed. There's some ending we could have gotten that we didn't. Or, you know, there's, of course, the achievements and whatnot. But I still think that was very neat. I, I, I enjoyed the heck out of this game. And, you know, replaying it again after eight years. A lot of fun. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, highly easy recommendation, right? I know we just kind of did everything. But to be fair, we did most of the bucket stuff. There's a lot of non-bucket stuff that we didn't touch. Because, again, I let's play this game five years, eight years ago now. God, that's wild to think about. Uh, the other game I will always recommend is, I want to say it's the same creator who did this game, did the Beginner's Guide, which is another, right, it's another walking simulator, as we call them, but it is very good, right? Whereas Stanley Parable is, you know, more comedic and more a philosophical, right, a philosophical demonstration on the idea of choice, right? The Beginner's Guide is a little bit more serious, you know, talking about what it means to create something, what it means to have legacy. And I highly recommend it. I don't think that, I think that's only on Steam, but if you have never played the Beginner's Guide, it is an easy recommendation. And then, yeah, I recommend this. I think this was a great addition, you know, everything I loved about the original, but they added a bunch of new stuff. So, yeah, it's neat. Do we need a, an actual, like, Stanley Parable to... Nah, not really. But, you know, for what we got here, we got something pretty decent. Something that I, I, again, a game I really enjoyed, just getting a little bit more of it. Right? And this time adding some reflection on the idea of nostalgia. Talking about, like, what it means to be a sequel, right? I think it was really neat. You know, they do a, they do a great job and I'm glad to see it again. So, we will be back in the future on Friday... We have Game of the Year, right? It is finally time for, well, it's 2023 in review, right? Where we go back over a bunch of different things, but specifically 2023 Game of the Year. So we will be back for that. I have a list. I'm not, su will this be on the list? Probably not. I mean, I could l technically add it to the list, but I don't think I'm going to. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to add... I'll put it on the honorable mentions. But it's a great game. It is a truly great game. So yeah. But we'll be back on Friday with Game of the Year. So until then, I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Till next time. Peace.